we're back here episode number five of the play to earn series free to play 100 percent. so 100 percent free to play no no money spent on this game this is arc world this is mmo rpg sandbox uh pretty much the first actual game in my opinion that is a crypto nft blockchain based where you can actually play and it's actually not just like a clicker uh it's got tons of gameplay tons of features um I mean, I'm sure there's some others out there that are very close and similar in nature of doing stuff. But to my knowledge, most of the quote unquote games out there are incredibly generic clicker based games that you don't really do anything. So this game is definitely ahead of most of those games. And also one of the reasons why I really, really, really like this game in particular for the crypto nft space is because it's a publisher developer that has been making actual video games for the last you know 15 years or so um, this game is also based on their predecessor game which is called arc age and so arc age is still in service today so what they did is they took arc age as a whole this looks almost identical to their game arc age and they stripped it down, made it more basic, and made it more, uh, you know, user friendly. Because ArcAge has, you know, a thousand systems in the game, for example, whereas this game has maybe you know ten systems or fifteen systems in the game. So it's a lot easier for players to jump in and, and understand kind of what's going on. It's still complicated as you know, as as, as, as ever, uh, but. As you see in the series, there's just so much that you can do. So we are going to go and we're going to get our dailies. Uh, we almost made a big mistake right there. Uh, and that was to not open up our dailies before we did any of the stuff. So again, we're going to go and reroll these quests because we want to try and actually get better versions, get higher rewards. So if we notice on this one, it says low rank. So we're going to go ahead and reroll this and we're going to go change mission. And we're going to change mission and we're going to try and get a high rank. Hey, we got a high rank. And so you see our rewards actually got better. You know, not everything at all. I think the labor stayed the same at 50, but overall our rewards got better there. So we're going to go now turn in our quest because that quest is going to give us XP and that XP is going to feed into our rewards here. So this is what we're going to aim for. This is what we do every single day on this channel when we jump in. Uh, we play at least once a day to maximize your daily rewards. There's no rush to get to level 50 or 55. Uh, if you did want to play as a 100% free to play player, um, you definitely should try to rush on day one of the server release. So if one of the easiest ways to make money in any MMORPG uh, is to rush day one, play like 24 seven on day one and get as far and head of the general population as you can but you see this right now we're already about 13 days into the server's life there's no point in rushing the the rushers are already max level the rushers are already there the rushers have already you know dominated the end game content so this series is showing you how to play as a you know standard new user coming in just playing the game so we're we came back here because we need to harvest our crops this is also one of the most important things as a free-to-play player so uh, let's go summon our mounts and we need to go do this quest also so this one supply medicine so we need stamina potion rank one times ten this one is pretty easy to do all you're doing with this one is you're converting gold into other resources and a lot of the times you actually make money. This one is not a make money one. This one you're actually gonna lose money on, but it's okay, you get plenty of money. So for doing just random things, for just playing the game, you get money. So purchasing 10 staminas, and then now we take it over here. We could have rerolled. We still have a lot of rerolls that we could have done to change, but this one is fairly simple, fairly easy. Um, you know, Spending two gold and 40 silver to get one gold and then get some labor and to get uh, Archeum is, is a really good deal actually like because later on once you start leveling up these quests are actually gonna get harder So this quest once you level up and get higher levels is actually gonna start requiring you to have harvestables like logs lumber uh, Soil flowers and that stuff 
So that stuff is actually a lot harder to get as a free-to-play player than it is to do these basic spend money. Like spend money you can get, but the only way as a free-to-play player to get crops is to have public land. And you can plant max three crops in this public land. And so we actually, we need to go get back our crops. We need to buy some more of these. The crops are very, very cheap. You can see they cost three silver each. Uh, you do want to pick the one that is the temperature. So we are doing flowers right now. We're doing these saffron seed bundles and you do want to make choices. So in this game, you want to stick with your decisions and your choices. So we've decided to grow flowers. So we are gonna stick and continuously grow flowers. And you see, we are also going to try and put them down as quick as possible. Because you see, there's other players and these other players are potentially gonna steal your spots. So if we don't replace our flowers right away, someone might steal this spot from us. They might put down their own crops because this is a public farming area. So they could actually steal. So realistically, we shouldn't actually be harvesting because there's other players around us that are a threat to us and taking our spot. Because you see, there's not much spots available, if any, in this public farm. So you have to really look for, you know, farming spots because land is limited. So is there, this might be a spot right here. Let's see. Yep, so there's a spot right there. So now that a couple more people, okay, spots are opening up. So now the people are actually, you know, quitting and giving up. They've failed at Ark World. They're like, I'm done with this. I can't make money, uh, yada, yada, yada. The game's too hard. So now that the people are quitting, there's more public spots. But for the first week or so, there was literally no public spots available out there. So getting these public spots in the beginning is very, very important. But if you're playing day one, it's probably more important to just get your level up and progress your character as soon as possible so you can get higher end materials and you can sell them as soon as possible because they were worth a lot more. They're worth like 10 times more value than they were they are currently now. So for example, like the skill book. So if you go to the auction house and we go skill, we can see like um, these green skill books. Let's go to green are selling for 0.3 for the chests and the skill books themselves are selling for as little as like 0.4 or one. And so in the beginning of the server, let's see if this shows up here. Uh, these guys were actually selling for five and for 13 and for 27 and 16. You see, it's like these guys were selling for a ton more than what they currently are selling for. So we've done that. Now we need to go back to where we are. So we can either run back or we can simply just teleport. Teleport does cost this bound here after stone, but once again, it's only going to cost you gold, which is not that much. That's 45 silver. So we're going to go ahead and just use our teleport because they gave us some of these and we still have six of these left. And you do get a good amount of gold by simply just playing the game. You're gonna have enough gold where you're you're not gonna run out, at least probably the first month or two if you're a free-to-play player. The only way that you really spend gold is by selling things on the auction house. So next up, we are now gonna go ahead and do some more questing. We're gonna go try and do the quests that are around here. So generally, you wanna do all the quests, but we've already failed on this. We don't wanna backtrack really. So we're gonna go ahead and just abandon those, abandon those, abandon those. So we're gonna abandon all those quests. We're gonna click pass. And then we're gonna click pass. So it's not the end of the world, especially if you're a low level, like level 10 to forego quest. You do get some really nice consumable items though. So, like, so this is a nice reward right here, getting some of those. All right, so next up, let's go show you a really, really sneaky tip on how to actually earn free items. So it has to do with all the bots and auto farmers that are in the game. There's actually quite a bit of bots and auto farmers. So if you find a place where there's a bunch of NPCs that are just grinding mobs away, like kind of AFK auto botting, which technically isn't allowed 
Um, so these guys will eventually get banned. It's just they are slow at banning them. And you can see we are lagging some because we are an American player. So we have about a 500 ping. So we're going over here to show you a secret that is really, really powerful, especially as a free-to-play player. Getting free stuff is always, always, always a good thing. So we're heading over towards a higher level area in the starter zone. There's going to be some zones like this in areas in other parts of the map. So it doesn't have to be this character, but just anywhere that characters are kind of like auto farming, you'll notice that there's free loot on the ground. So the auto farmers don't necessarily care about the loot because the loot's not really valuable. They're just trying to farm EXP and gain levels. And so once they get enough levels, then they can start selling experience points. So we come over here and we'll see just tons and tons of people. We gotta be very careful to avoid the mobs. And you can see we can collect these bags right here. This is loot that another player has killed and has not picked up. So if another player kills something and doesn't pick up the loot for like one minute, then it becomes public and anyone can pick up the loot. So right there, so we picked up three merchant coin purses completely for free. We did not have to kill any mobs whatsoever. So you just hover your cursor over and you see, so there's a bag right there. So once again, we can collect a bag. And this is actually gonna be very, very important for free to play players because most of your income is actually gonna come out of coin purses. So collecting them for free is very, very valuable. So we're gonna go ahead and collect all these guys. So this is a huge, huge tip for people. Generally, you wanna open up the level 41 coin purses. So these ones are not the best coin purses to open up. These are the level 30 to 40 coin purses. These are the second to best coin purses, but they don't have the good items in them that you want. This is, your, this is just gonna help you get your skill books. You might get a little bit of logs, a little bit of like skewing, a little bit of ore. Hey, they've actually done a better job. So this area used to be completely 100% filled with bots, right? So literally all the mobs would be auto farm bots, but now they've actually banned and removed people. So that's good. So like I said, they are doing bans and they are removing people. It just, the bots can make free accounts. And this is why, uh, you know, it's hard as a free to play player is because you got these bots that are creating new accounts over and over again and just constantly spamming and destroying the low level economy, the low level market. If these bots weren't here, all these resources would actually be worth more. But the only way to uh, completely remove bots is to constant monitor and, and ban, 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 ban. But this, they could run over here and get to this area within like, you know, 15 minutes. Uh, these mobs are fairly easy. They're level 40, so they do have to be a little bit hard. So it takes about like two hours to get to level 30 and to progress their character uh, and get their gears. So like, it's a very small time frame that they have to do. So let's see. How many coin purses did we get? We actually got 15 coin purses right there just for free by running around collecting all these uh, dead bodies. So we can do this more and more and more and collect more and more coin purses, but we're gonna actually proceed with the series again. So that was a nice little detour of how to get free coin purses. Uh, you know, not many people know about that tip. That's a, a huge tip, especially if you could get Noble, I believe it is, the top tier coin purse. If you can get the free Noble coin purses off of an, uh, you know, a bot that's farming, like that's really, really good. Because that's that's what you need to get to, to make your money in, as a free-to-play player, like with no, no cheats, no nothing, like nothing like deceptive. You simply just need the Noble coin purses and you need to open up like you know, a thousand of them, and you'll make enough BSLT to get some decent gear, to get all your skills, uh, and to possibly, I mean, we probably need more than a thousand, but you'll be on your way to getting your land and your house. 
So that's the end goal of this series is getting the land in the house and we are going to get it by simply opening up coin purses. And so that's one of the things is that this series can show you, hey, anyone can do this. Again, until a lot of people start opening up those coin purses and the value on those coin purse items drops significantly. So that's the, that's the big problem. Is any guide or tips or tutorials that come out, if more people do it, then the value of those items decrease. Then it becomes harder and harder. So that's why you won't see you know sharing tips, ideas, or tricks because if someone tells you how to do something, then more and more people do it and it ruins that market. So it's not a good thing to tell people how to make money or to produce things because you're actually hurting yourself. So like this guide is hurting myself, not only on the profit making, like I could do all these activities myself and, and sell them for profit, uh, but just in general of like making all these items cheaper and destroying these markets and these methods. But I'm not doing this for profit. I'm not playing Ark World specifically to make profit. I play Ark World because I like the game and I like the future, um, you know, potential of this game. So I'm not I'm not here for short term profits. All right, so we did that quest. Like some people think I'm crazy because I, I talk about Ark World being around for five years, and so they're like, "What? Well, the game's gonna be dead in you know two weeks, five days." A month like I've heard it all right I've heard every single thing that the game is gonna be dead tomorrow the next day uh, five days a week a month six months like I've heard it all right guys so I'm you know nothing shakes my belief that the game will be here six uh, you know five years will there be all these people will there be you know 10,000 people playing the game you know probably not maybe but the servers will be here. The game will be active. There will be a community that is playing this game. And the reason I say that is because the game that this is based on is called Arc Age. And Arc Age is about nine years old now. So it's, you know, really old, right? For an MMORPG to last nine years, that's a really, really good thing. During battles, numbers beside the word combo show combo. And so Arc Age only has a few hundred players. There's not that many active players on the servers in Arc Age, but the game is still active and running. And that's it's been the same for for years now. There hasn't been, you know, tens of thousands of players playing Arc Age for a long, long time. They always get population spikes when they release fresh start servers. So they release a new server, and the new server has different rules and maybe catch-up mechanics, like boosted the XP or boosted drop rates, uh, and so forth. And so they always get some new players to come back to check out the content there, and they also get some new players or some returning players when they release big updates. And in Arc Age, they did updates, like big updates, about once every like six months. So hopefully, my hope for this is that there's going to be big updates like every month or so for Arc World. And the reason I say that is because the content is being reused. This is, you know, the same world, the same assets that Arc Age uses, and they're able to reuse these assets. And they, they only did the south of the world. So in this game, only down here is available. In Arc Age, you can already go way up here to the north. And so the north has several different zones, there's islands, there's castle sieges up here as well, there's a dungeon, an instance dungeon. Like there's a lot of content that is locked in this game and is already just, all they have to do is unlock it. That's why when you download this game, it's like 90 gigabytes or something. Like it's a huge file to download the game. And because it's all the assets that are in Arc Age are already in this file, they're already here. So all they simply have to do is unlock it So what I tell people is this is like one giant beta test. They are testing out the very basics of the game system, making sure that the you know BSLT blockchain technology works. So all the transactions are traced. You can see all of them on the board portal. 
They're also testing out the game economy to see how things work out. They're also testing out player behavior. So player behavior is definitely one of the most important thing. And they've made some active changes already on the game based on player behavior. Players were complaining that it was too hard to repair their gear when it broke. So they've actively already changed that within the first, you know, seven days. They added daily Archeum. Uh, they give away some free Archeum on the website via coupons and giveaways. Oh, so we have a quest here. Open a coin purse. So let's go ahead and open one of those coin purses that we stole from uh, from the bots. And so we have to open up some coin purses too because this is where we get infusions. Infusions are how you feed your gear and make them stronger. Oh, so over here we have a blacksmith. The blacksmith is also where you repair your gear. So if we come over here and we can see, oh, he doesn't have a shop. Okay, this is a fake blacksmith. This guy doesn't repair your gear. It's over here. This is the real blacksmith. So over here, you have the store and you have repair. So this is where you repair your items when they break. You can see our repair cost is gonna cost five. Do not do this. Do not repair until your item is like completely broken and only repair your main weapon. Everything else you don't really need. So for us, all we're gonna need is this, the club to repair it, but we do not want to repair our gear. So you'd simply do repair selected and then click over what you want to repair. But again, don't do it. Don't do it until it's completely broken and then you have to repair it. Another thing, so if you want to actually change weapons and you decided like, hey, I picked the wrong weapon to start with or I want a different one, you come over to the blacksmith and you buy these weapons here for gold. I do not recommend this at all. So there's an armor merchant as well that has armor. And then there's also a weapon merchant that has weapons. Again, do not buy these. If you think you made a mistake and you want to change weapons, you know, spend one BSLT and buy a new weapon off of the auction house. So as we progress, you'll start to see that we will get BSLT. Like we'll actually earn BSLT. And so we can buy this purple ax for one BSLT. So this is a, a strong, strong weapon. So it's significantly stronger than what we have right now. And we can buy it for one BSLT. Like one BSLT in the long grand scheme of things is absolutely nothing. Let's see how much the labor potions are. So labor potions are down down to nine BSLT. As the prices of labor gets cheaper and cheaper, it makes it easier for a free to play to actually earn, you know, earn BSLT. So one of the first things you might want to do, again, this is not like the best thing to do. So. Some people ask like, hey, why aren't you doing this? Why are you doing uh, shield and mace? Why are you doing two, two different weapons? Why are you not doing this? And so forth. We'll see, this series is not about 100% most optimal way to progress. This series is simply playing the game as a 100% free to play player, making mistakes, you know, doing stupid stuff, um, you know, learning from your experiences and progressing with some tips and tricks from someone who's already done all this stuff. I'm not gonna show you the absolute best way. I'm not gonna min-max everything because min-max everything is, you know, that, that's not what we're doing here. We're, we're not trying to min-max everything. Uh, Arc Age is a game where you can play however you want to play, or actually Arc World is a game where you can play however you want to play. And so, like I said in prior videos, this, step of doing all like these quests is probably not the best way to play the game right but this is how i want to show the game off for new players this is how i you know how i'm doing it here like i'm not trying to set this game up for like the future this is not going to be my main account i'm not playing this account once we get to 400 bslt like that's it i'm done i'm stopped playing this account i'm going to withdraw that money and yeah move on to something you know, more productive with my time because in the long run, it's not worth my time to do this. Like, this is a complete waste of time for me, honestly. Like, 
I should not be doing this, but I'm doing this out of the kindness of my heart to show people that it is possible and to stop, like, the whiners. I know it's not going to stop everyone, but, the, like, yeah, all the people that whine, you can't make any money as a free-to-play player. I've had a bunch of people that have DM'd me on Reddit or DM me in a Discord and other places, you know, messages on YouTube. That, hey, I made a thousand. I made fifteen hundred BSLT. Like, I made money. I cashed out. Like, I've had a lot of people, free to play players, say that stuff to me. So, like, I know it's a hundred percent possible. Like, yes, they did get lucky. They got you know some really good drops per se, or they're very smart. The key aspect though is, you know, they. They're smart. Like, some people got money by farming the moles. And they were constantly making a bunch of money farming the moles because they studied the moles. They figured out where the mole, uh, the moles like lived and, and respawned. So, those people got rewarded. They explored the game. They figured out, hey, this is how, how you fight a mole. This is how you find a mole. Uh, this is how you kill a mole. And, okay, let's farm them. Then you got the other people who got most of their money via playing in the raids. And the raids, they end up getting the boss drops. Like, they got really lucky and they got the boss drop, right? They got, you know, the blue Archeum Core or the purple Archeum Core and they sold it for a thousand, you know, BSLT. Uh, and that happens, you know, if you just you know, keep doing it. Consistency, if you keep playing, keep playing, keep playing, you will eventually win a dice roll and you will eventually get your you know, BSLT, you'll eventually get your reward. So they worked hard at it. They put the time and effort in. But really, I mean, time and effort, it's only been less than two weeks. So anyone that has made, you know, over a thousand BSLT already, like that's pretty good for two weeks of playing a video game. Like that's 400 bucks, 500 bucks almost for, for playing a video game for two weeks. Like that's a pretty good amount of money, honestly. Like, to a lot of people, 500 bucks in two weeks is, is, is a good chunk of money. And then there's also other people that use that money to go and buy land and then go and farm and make more money off of their land. So they rented land and they bought a tent and so forth. And like, it's possible. But just, you have to put the time, you have to put the effort into the game to actually progress and to make that, to make that money, make that BSLT. Anyway, guys, that will be it here. We've finished off our quests. So these are all done now. So we are done for today. And we will see you next time. Thanks for watching. As always, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one.